me walk through the letter with you, and then sure. we'll see if we have questions. Okay. So I'm going to uh, use the um, Barry's edits to the letter, that okay. document. Is that this other? I don't know what you have, so. You have the Barry's edits, and you have uh, an email to me. So, yes, the one that looks like the letter. I have this. Okay. Um, so uh, this is a letter from the chair on behalf of the committee to Commissioner Porter, Mike Covey of Vermont Traditions Coalition, and Barry Lanare of Vermont Humane Society. Um, it's to summarize the efforts that uh, those three persons <laughs> and Representative Cody made outside the committee to address the issue of wild mice and retrieval of wildlife and to seek assistance in moving forward. He then thank them for their uh, participation, and that continued participation and input will be integral to the committee as it pursues the issue of wanton waste and wildlife retrieval during the remainder of the biennial. Uh, you then summarize how the issue was put before the sub working group. Um, it was presented to the committee at H357. During testimony, it became clear that there were substantial issues of disagreement between the various parties that they likely would not quickly resolve in committee. As a result, the chair asked Representative Bodhi to form a working group with your organizations in an effort to recruit consensus on language addressing wanton waste and retrieval of wildlife. Representative Bodhi reported that this working group really, um, um, met several times and that you each worked cooperatively and courteously to discuss the issue and potential language. To this end, at the last meeting, Barry proposed the following language. Um, so, a person shall not intentionally kill a game or small species and intentionally, knowingly, or recklessly fail to retrieve and dispose of game or small game species, any game or small game taken must be immediately made part of the daily or seasonal bag limit. If applicable, shall not be considered lawful disposal for any person to place, leave, dump, or abandon a game or small game carcass or parts of a carcass along or upon a public right of way or highway or on public or private property, including a waterway or stream, without the permission of the owner or tenant. In addition to the requirements above, a person shall not intentionally take a game or small game species during regulated open season intentionally, knowingly, or recklessly fail to salvage for human use the edible portions of the carcass or usable portion of the fur or hide of the animal. Barry's uh, edit is why um, he wanted to provide his intent and that he would like the letter to say that it was his intent to address the concern that H357 would create a de facto closed season on coyotes by retaining the utilization requirement in H347 for game and fur bearers subject to a regulated season while applying a retrieve and dispose requirement to a broader group of species, including coyotes. The letter goes on to say, Commissioner Porter, Mr. Covey expressed their appreciation for making the proposal, but expressed concerns and proposed changes to the language. Commissioner Porter noted that law enforcement and state employees are often asked to move or dispose of dead animals on highways and other places, and the accepted practice is to move the carcass out of the right of way, but leave it on the adjacent land. Mr. Covey noted that the recommended method of retrieval of some game species involves harvesting the edible or usable meat or fur in the field and disposing of the carcass at the harvest site. Prohibiting a hunter from leaving a carcass in the field will conflict with generally accepted hunting principles. Mr. Covey noted that regardless of accepted hunting principles for disposal of a carcass, a hunter should not leave a carcass on private land without permission of the landowner or owner's agent. And Mr. Covey also noted that the language addressing disposal in a waterway could be problematic. Disposal of a carcass in water is already prohibited under state water law, probably under state waste law as well. Commissioner Porter then proposed that Mr. Laundry's proposed language be amended to apply to fish or game with a bag or creel limit instead of to game or small game species. Mr. Laundry considered the proposal, was concerned that it may be too narrow for the purposes of disposal. Mr. Laundry requested more time to consider the proposal. Commissioner Porter and Mr. Covey also noted that they would need um, 
to consult with staff or persons within their organizations. Commissioner Reporter expected he would receive input from his technical and warding staff. Mr. Covey noted that he would need to consult with his board. Mr. Laundry also noted that he would need to consult with other parties. The working group then discussed how the need for consultation with staff, their associations, and other interested parties. Coupled with the relatively short amount of time left in the 2019 legislative session, we make it difficult to move H357 or another bill addressing wanton waste or wildlife retrieval. Thus, it will propose that this letter be written and sent to the members of the working group to ask for official input or positions from the relevant staff or to interested parties. And then you get the provision about the request for input on proposed language. To further this, the discussion on the appropriate state law addressing wanton waste and retrieval of wildlife, the committee asks that you circulate the language attached below to your staff members, board, or other interested parties. Please collect any input that you believe is relevant to the discussion of wanton waste and retrieval of wildlife. Please also propose any changes to the language. Most specifically, please ask for comments on whether the language below should apply to game or small game, fish or game with a bag or creel limit or some other alternative. The committee will schedule meetings uh, early in 2020 to receive input from you, your organizations and other um, in interested parties. It's likely the committee will attempt to act on wanton waste or retrieval of wildlife bill next year. Hopefully the input and comments you receive from your organizations and interested parties will help build a consensus that will allow the committee to quickly move the bill and you thank them and that your assistance is very greatly appreciated, et cetera, et cetera. Then you get to the proposed language. Um, so the red line here is um, edit, proposed edits by Barry. He is concerned about having the um, Fisher game with the daily or seasonal bag or creel limit being the standard for disposal um, or failure to retrieve. Uh, he would like that language to just say game or small game species or potentially or other alternative. Um, and then on uh, the second paragraph, subdivision A2, um, there's the, Barry would like the language to say public right of way or highway or on public or private property. I don't know if public is necessary there um, or it could be clarified uh, combining that, that last set sentence where um, the subdivision shall not apply to a law enforcement officer or state employee or to the disposal according to generally accepted hunting principles on public land where hunting is allowed. So maybe what needs to be um, tied down is the, the public land where hunting is not allowed. Um, and then Lewis had some uh, input. Uh, Lewis was away and um, didn't get me his edits until uh, yesterday late. Um, I think uh, his input is good. Um, first, he wants to to make clear that that um, that there are still some issues that that the group did not reach consensus on, um, at least yet. Um, so something along the lines, although substantial progress was made during discussion on a variety of issues and concerns. There remain several matters on which the group was not yet able, at least yet, to reach a consensus among those were how fish, including bait fish, would be dealt with, the wording of an exemption for law enforcement, state and municipal workers engaged in their duties, exactly how coyote and crows would be handled in the disposal retrieval section, and the definitions of edible and usable and others. And then he did want to um, recommend that that the proposed language include the exemptions that you had already uh, discussed slash agreed upon, including things like theft of the wild animal by another person, unanticipated weather or other act of God, unavoidable loss in the field to another wild animal, defense of person or property, 
I think we were talking about sick or uh, diseased animal. Um, is there another one? That's 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 kind of already in there, but I think he's right. It needs to be clarified a little bit. Um, Where's the list you're reading from now? Uh, it's in the last version of the amendment that you were looking at. Um, and so that's that's what Lewis provided. Barry did respond to that. He said, I agree with both of the commissioner's suggestions. I think his summary of the key pending issues is accurate, and he would be fine with including that wherever it best fits. And he agrees that inclusion of the exemption language would provide context and probably save time in explaining this to other parties. Um, plus, there might be feedback on the exemption language useful as we're working towards a final product. Um, and then I used Barry's wrong uh, organization in the letter. You can take his word for a new word. Um, thank you so much. Thank you for everyone. Um, Mike and Barry and um, Carol. And a huge, huge Brady. thanks to Michael Brady who knows <laughs> everything. Making it all it was those. Thank it you. was those three guys that yeah. was working hard. Yeah, and Frank. They did. They did. They were all great. Everybody was so. I was so impressed. It was just unbelievable because it is so complicated. And I really do think, Amy, you were so smart to send everybody away because the kind of nitty gritty detail you can't, you know, you can't do this. In a it's way complicated, as I've learned. <laughs> so today, I just wanted to make sure that the, the um, our committees gets a chance to ask questions, and um, it sounds like there's agreement that we can make these proposed changes and we're moving toward some information that could be shared over the summer with stakeholders. Yeah, I, I think it's it's going to be pretty easy for me to add the paragraph that Lewis proposed into the letter. I thought think it's also going to be very easy to add the the proposed exemptions into that proposed language. Yes. Um, I think I can easily make the tweak about of uh, um, disposal on public land where hunting is not allowed <clears throat> to clarify that. My key issue is how you want to put in the alternatives for disposal and retrieval. Um, I, I don't know how you want to do that. Do you want to provide alternatives? Do you just want to put game or small game species? Do you want to put game or small game species? Or some other specific alternative. That's that's my that's the one issue that I I don't I don't really have an answer for you. If that's kind of a possible call. So we're looking at that. paragraph two in the proposed language. Paragraph A okay. and A one and A two. Okay. Um, that's kind of I don't know what you want to do with that. This alternative one could keep me in there. Alternative one was game or small game species. Alternative two, and what I drafted up, was Fisher game with a daily or seasonal bag or creel limit. That was kind of what we started talking about, but then Barry, was, during our working group meeting, said that he was uncomfortable with that, um, and he has his reasons, and I don't want to let him explain what they are. Um, and so he asked that alternative two be struck in A1 and A2. So can you help us understand the differences between the two game or small game species? So so game is um, I don't know if I have it. Oh, no, I know I have it, I got it. Um, <coughs> small game are game birds, except for turkeys, game quadruped, except for big game fur bears and other wild animals. Can and so, you, can you use that one more time? It's, well, game birds except for turkeys, game quadrupeds except for <laughs> big game, fur bears and other wild animals. 
there's a real issue as to whether or not this includes other wild animals because other wild animals is everything. It's birds, fish, amphibians, reptiles, other than domestic animals, domestic fowl, domestic pets. The way that this reads, it, it could mean, it could just mean game birds and, and game quadrupeds except for big game and except for fur bears and except for other wild animals. But that's not how it reads because of the use of the semicolons. It's game quadrupeds except for game, for big game semicolon, fur bears and other wild animals. I did not draft this, thankfully. Lewis, Lewis kind of was like, you drafted that? And I'm like, no, I didn't. And I checked, and I did not draft it. Um, and, um, but it, it's, it's that's, that's really an issue, because if you include game or small game species, and it includes all fur bearers and all other wildlife, then you're back at where you were when you started with 357 and the concern about how broad of a scope the bill has. Um, but, but, and that's one of the reasons that, that Lewis said, well, why don't you narrow it to those, those animals that have a daily or seasonal bag or creel limit? And that kind of, that makes sense in B, so a person shall not intentionally take um, fish or game with a daily or seasonal bag or creel limit during a regulated open season and intentionally knowingly or recklessly fail to salvage for human use. So during that open season, you shouldn't be intentionally taking those those fish or game with a daily limit and then not fail it and failing to salvage them. And for the use for edible portions or usable portions of fur hot. So that that's what the group agreed on. That 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 kind of is a is something to put out as an alternative. It it, it does make sense there to have that. But I think Barry is concerned. Um, Barry, I don't want to. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to explain if you like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll hear from you okay. on this okay. for sure. I um, just wanted us to understand the legal dif differences. Right, and so I think part of the issue is if you go forward with a bill, I think you need to, to clarify what small game means. Maybe you mean it to what mean it or want it to mean what it, it reads as right now. Um, and, but if it does, then it really has no distinction from the definition of wild animals. Because if, if it includes wild animals, and wild animals is everything, then small game is the same thing as wild animals. Um, so I don't, the only distinction is would you be, you would be accepting turkeys and, and big game, but big game is game. So uh, it's it's. <laughs> this is why we sent this off. It hurts your right. head to think about it. <laughs> um, so th that that definition is a large is a is a kind of a, a big question mark. Um, and so that's that's basically the letter and, and the issue. Again, I I, uh, I thought everybody worked well, um, and it was um, a pretty productive working group. <coughs> Representative Dillon. Um, do we have in definition those terms, um, game, big game, small game? Sure. Game is game birds or game quadrupeds. And game quadruped are caribou, elk, moose, deer, gray squirrel, rabbit, and black bear. Um, what is big game accepted? And what is big game? Uh, so big game is uh, deer, bear, moose, wild turkey, caribou, elk, and Atlantic salmon taken in the Connecticut River Basin. Um, uh, the difference is there is because there are different penalties for taking big game in violation of statute for rule. <clears throat> but uh, what happens right now today if it's, it's 
moose season. And someone has a moose permit and they kill the moose and leave it. Never retrieve it. Um, so so the, the moose rule does have a retrieval component of it. And so uh, a warden could uh, issue a violation for that. <laughs> and is that the same for other big game attempt also? Uh, it is not the same for deer. Deer does not have a retrieval aspect in the rule. It, it is there for bear. Um, and it is there for, uh, it's not the same requirement as moose or bear um, for, uh, oh, for migratory waterfowl, which is not big game. Um, there is a retrieval requirement as well. And migratory waterfowl would fall under um, deemed birds. And then why are turkeys accepted in this? Not turkeys. Uh, because tur turkeys are big game. <clears throat> and so do they have a retrieval requirement right now? I don't know about turkey. I, I would have to look that up. Mike Clanton. So for big game, they're required to be tagged and reported? For the record. If you would. For the record, Mike Covey, Vermont Traditions Coalition. Uh, big game are required to be tagged and reported, which is a de facto requirement to remove them from the field. For all big game. They have to be taking, taken in person to a reporting station for all big game, yes. So separate from whether they have a rule or not, they would need to be retrieved. Yes, but then some the have rule, a specific rule. By law, they have to be retrieved because you have to place a, physically place a tag on them and then physically take them to a place of reporting. Okay. Um, other questions? Okay. I think um, if you would, if you would, the <coughs> next step be to um, draft up the additional proposed changes um, and then leave, I don't know, what is the committee's thinking on the question that Michael has posed to us on game or small game versus um, fish or game with a daily or seasonal bag creel limit? Representative Bates. I'm up for reporting back the uh, fish or game with a daily or seasonal bag and creel limit. I believe that should be in there. There, there are other alternatives too. I, don't, I, I, that's one of the things I wanted to put out for you. This is what was discussed in the working group, but, but, I, and I don't know the universe of all the alternatives, but you could probably come up with other alternatives as well. Okay. So in this case, independent of what I. What I think um, I will want to um, I will want to support the um, final product of the working group. Uh, I may not like it. This has been the situation in the past with working groups, <clears throat> but it's been it's been our committee's position and, and me as part of the our committee to honor the work of of the independent working groups um, except when they said they couldn't get it done and we sent them back <laughs> to get it done um, that said we don't have their final report yet <clears throat> and I, I do want to suggest that as Michael pointed out using the word game and I think as I understand it small game is game is there isn't a real distinction between game and small game uh, first of all that's a question of to council there, there is <laughs> because game means game birds or game quadrupeds and the game quadruped is caribou elk moose, deer, gray squirrel, rabbit, and black bear, and, and game birds are um, quail, partridge, woodcock, pheasant, yeah. plover, Wilson snipe, other shorebirds, rail coot, gallinule, wild duck, wild geese, and wild turkey. 
So there's there those are limited universes, both of them, right? Well, they're both ga uh, they're all game though. No, one's game birds, one's game quadruped, and then yes, they are both game. Right. Right. Yep. But then small game means game birds, which I just read to yep. you, except for turkeys. Yep. Game quadrupeds, which I just read to you, except for big game. Fur bearers, so all of the fur bearers and other wild animals. Yeah. So small game is much broader yeah. than game. Right, right. Okay, so it, it's important to hear that, for me to hear that and the committee to hear that. And that, in my estimation, puts us right back to the beginning where people are concerned their grandchild will get arrested for popping a chipmunk with a BB gun. And we don't want to go there. I think we got to get away from there. Um, all reasonability says no. Uh, we're not going to get a game warden showing up in your backyard and taking your grandchild away in cuffs, um, or even admonishing that child. But that was a, a fair amount of air was expended on that, <laughs> and we need to get. I, we, I think we just need to get away from that. So my, my question, Michael, is that what, what are the consequences to the principle of wanton waste um, do you see if we strike small game? I think you need to talk to the advocates about that. I think you need to talk to to those interested okay. parties because it becomes a policy issue. There, yeah. there are there are um, interests involved that if you use small game or if you use fur bear, that uh, would not be addressed if you use the the daily limit language. So. Coyote is one. Um, so that that is that is something you need to talk to the interested parties about. Yep. And, then, and why there is that <coughs> there's still that that debate about the scope of, okay. of the bill. And 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 the interested parties are in the room. We, we may hear from them and get an answer each of them to that question um, or it may end up being a question that gets resolved in later later iterations that come from this up thank you other questions yeah <coughs> under uh i guess one day uh i understand the issue with game and small game and that problem under alternative two, fish or game with a daily or seasonal bag or grilling it. What's included or excluded by grilling that way with that definition? Is that speaking a little bit to the coyote issue? Yes, it is. Too? Yes, mm -hmm. coyote don't have that that daily or seasonal bag or creel limit. Um, so some of the f the fur bear, I don't think. Can I look to Mike? The fur bears don't have a daily or seasonal bag on them, too. Mike Covey again from Ontario Trippers <coughs> Coalition. Um, I believe there are daily limits on fur for bears hunting. for hunting. No, there's not. There are not for trapping. Not for coyotes. There's not no for limit. coyotes. Night or day. Night or day, 24 7. We, we know that about okay. so mm -hmm. There's no limits, though. But for certain fur bears, I believe there are daily limits for hunting. There are not daily limits for trapping. Right. All right. All so right. So it's, so it's more complex than just a yes or no answer. Some final questions from, from Michael Green. Representative Bates? Yeah, just real quick. Do you, <laughs> do you know of any states that have? A season on coyotes? I don't off the top of my head. I haven't researched it, so I don't. I'm I don't just know. curious if we're going to be trendsetters and leaning toward that way. We're always trendsetters. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got to research California first and then Vermont will follow it. 
So I'm just curious if there's maybe, I don't know, maybe Barry or somebody can let me know. We're actually not open for All right, thank you. I'm good. Thank I'm you. Good. Representative Morgan. Why is it that a coyote um, during the prime season is the hides are worth a lot of money, as many people can tell you. Why do we as a state, or any of the states, why don't we consider those fur-bearing animals? Coyote is a defined as a fur-bearer. It is yes. defined as a fur-bearer? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. And I believe there's a, there's, a, there's a trapping season for coyotes, right? Not hunting season. Is that correct? No trapping. Mike, Mike Covey again, for the record. Um, Yes, there is a trapping season, a closed trapping season, and trapping's only allowed from October through uh, the end of December. Um, and I just looked, and I stand corrected, there are no daily limits on fur bearers for hunting either. Yes, Representative, how many more meetings are anticipated? <laughs> We're going through the summer, or is that kind of what's being looked at? Hopefully, you get this letter done in the next. The letter's in the next seven years. 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 Seven we being this our, our committee yeah. should say okay to this letter and send it off because because um, they, right. these people have to check back with all the people involved right. and I think that that's that will be a good process for everybody to go through. So I I, rec I would like it if you would draft with the proposed changes. Um, we can leave the questions here for now in this section, but make all the other additions and then I'll I'll check back with you on it. Sure. And then um, in our remaining time, I would, I would um, be open to hearing from the other members of the working group, Gary and Mike, if you have stuff to share. Sure. Um, Thank you, Michael. Could you put the language back up on the... Or do I have control of that? You have control I do? Wow, all right. The working guide you to it. Um, Probably. Easier. Yes, that's right. There oh, there we go. There it is. You can do it first. <laughs> oh, I do have an iPad, if I like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I'll just jump right into the question of, of, well, let me first explain. This was, as the letter states, language that I kind of put forward at the last meeting. And the intent of the language I put forward was to try to address some of the concerns that we've, we've touched on, that, that uh, Representative McCullough just, uh, touched on. Um, and how can we... Um, retain the utilization standard that was in the underlying bill for certain species of, of that we want to have that apply to, uh, knowing that some of us and, and folks outside and here in this room, you know, would like to have that standard be applied across the board. But we ran into the issue of some species, you know, some chipmunks and other groundhogs, I think was another concern. Somebody, you know, um, is, 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 should that be included in? What if kids are, are engaged in that behavior? And then the question, the big question of coyotes uh, and what do you do about that? So that was, that was the reason that I put forward this language. And it's, and it's, it, it's been redrafted a little bit here uh, after our discussion, but essentially what it does is it, it, it separates the standard and says for, um, small game, game and small game, and in my, in my drafting of it, you should know I did not, I do not want to reopen that issue that uh, Representative McCull had. So when I used that, it was mainly a term to capture fur bearers um, as a way of, of including them in, into that language. But I agree with, with Michael Grady that either we need to come up with a little different terminology or we need to revisit the small game definition to make it clearer, one or the other, because you could read it to be all wildlife. I'm not sure that's intent of small game, I and mean, I don't know why you would have a definition that includes everything. Um, but the, when I put this language forward, I was either I was really focused on what language could we use to include fur bearers um, and include game species, but exclude coyotes. Um, admittedly, trying to exclude coyotes because I was trying to solve the problem of how we move forward with with some protection for coyotes, but obviously the concern for some that if you, if you held it to a meat and fur standard, 
that, and I will I'll put my personal opinion here that you know I find it troubling that we're going to essentially create a carve out for coyotes because you can't. There is no, in my view, kind of legitimate reason you would be killing them in the spring or summer if you weren't protecting yourself or protecting your property. They're not. Their fur is not worth anything. People don't eat them generally. Um, but acknowledging that we weren't going to move forward unless we address that issue, the goal here was to say, let's apply the utilization use of meat and fur to the species that we can agree upon, and then use what they retrieve and dispose standard, which is, again, something that's used in other states that have a little slightly different wanton waste laws, to apply to a broader set of species, that we can at least set up an understanding that if you kill an animal, you're going to remove it um, and you're going to dispose of it in a, in a way that's accepted. Um, that was the intent of putting the language forward. So my problem, um, one, I have an issue with the use of, of, of daily and seasonal bag limits, even in um, subsection or section B, because if you do that, as Mike just mentioned, you're going to exclude coyotes and you're going to exclude all fur bearers because none of them have a daily or yearly bag limit. So that kind of defeats the purpose of trying to segment you know, uh, it off uh, to say here uh, we're going to have a meat and fur standard for fur bearers and game and a dispose and retrieve generally for all other species if in doing so you exclude fur bearers. So I, I think that's why game or small game I think is a better way to go about it. I'm open to other alternatives. I'd be happy if the letter was revised to just say or other alternatives to meet um, that uh, objective. Um, and I really have, and, and, and why I propose removing it from um, subsection A is because clearly if you're trying to create a different standard and a different s s um, group of species that the standard would apply to, if you use the same language in all throughout the bill, you're just applying the same standard or you're, you're applying the standards to the same group of species. So it sort of defeats the purpose of trying to pull these two issues apart, um, coyotes and and other species, if that makes any sense to you guys. Um, so I, I would be fine if the letter was rewritten to request other alternatives for, for game and small game. And I would agree, too, that at the end of the day, we're either going to have to redefine small game or we're going to have to come up with another terminology. because. You're right, Representative McCullough. If you just use small game as it's currently written, you could be right back into that issue. And, and one thing I will note is the fur bearers, the um, definition of fur bearers does not include chipmunks and groundhogs. So if you use something that you say the term, one option might be game quadrupeds, game birds, and fur bearers as a way as a terminology to use, so that captures pretty much the things that we wanted to capture, but doesn't open up the problem that small game presents of all other wild animals being thrown in there too. Um, Say that one more time. You could use. So I would say <coughs> game quadrupeds, uh, game birds, and fur bearers as a, as a as a substitute for game and small game um, to capture the same universe of species that I think we were discussing in the working group and that we had um, come to some agreement should be covered. Um, but that being said, I, I, I agree that, that you either need to reconsider the definition of small game or you need to come up with another terminology to use uh, for that. But I, I just want to be clear that the, the point of the language I put forward was to try to create um, essentially a, a minimum standard of retrieval and disposal for a broad number of species. And then for those that are, uh, that are game and, and taken during their season, and that was, that's a key point if you look in subsection B, um, during a regulated open season, well, coyotes, we could wordsmith that, but the intent was to say coyotes are subject to an entirely open 365 to, you know, year season. So um, that I would be, wouldn't be regulated. It wouldn't be limited. And maybe there's another word to use. But the idea was to say, if you're talking about species that are essentially have no season applied to them because there isn't one affirmatively put on them, 
then they wouldn't be subject to the meat and utilization stand. It's essentially a way of trying to carve out coyotes, to be honest with you. Um, it's not something I wanted to do uh, going into this bill, but I think it was the only way we were gonna move forward is to try to bifurcate the issue and address part of it with coyotes and what the standards should be for them and then game and, and other species that have a regulated season in some way, a, a heightened standard to use to meet and fur. Yeah, yes. So if we put a, or if someone put a closed season on coyotes, what would that do in terms of this bill? I think it would, well, I mean, depend on the, so if, if the Fish and Wildlife Board or, or the legislature, I think, decided they wanted to institute a regulated or limited season, then they would fall under that category of however the, the, those that category of species um, would be treated in the bill. So that would be depend on action some point down the line if um, the decision was made to be to have a season put on them. Yes. And you know who has jurisdiction on that? The Fish and Wildlife Board can make a season a rule. Yeah. And I know that there's there's efforts been and I, I was up front in the working group. I one of the reasons why I put forward this language to try to get us to some kind of a consensus is that I, I I believe there should be a season on coyotes. I believe that there are months of the year where it's just uh, no reason to be hunting them. Um, and but I think that's an issue that should be dealt with through settings of setting seasons, not through. And so to get to your question about seasons, I, I, I mean, I don't view this bill as, as um, setting seasons, limiting any time someone can hunt or trap any any species and that was kind that was what I was trying to get at in the language I put forward is to acknowledge that try to move us forward in a way that um, we would hinge whether or not species would be covered based on whether a season was put on them and we can we can quite frankly fight that out on the Fish and Wildlife Board and other places to try to um, put in place what I think should be a season for certain months of the year. Thank you for that. being honest. I try to be, you know, for, <laughs> for being uh, upfront about that. Yeah. But again, I just think it's important that um, that we understand that the, if you use the term bag limits, you are excluding all fur bears. So that would even be bobcats, fishers. I mean, and I, and I think we emailed a little bit after the meeting. Um, with and I'll, I, Commissioner's not here, so I'll let him speak. But I think in some of the emails uh, that we sent after the meeting, I think there was a general understanding that for subsection B, we were trying to talk about fur bearers excluding coyotes. That was the intent behind that section is to get at language that would uh, address fur bearers generally, but not pose the issue related to coyotes where you would have a de facto season put in place by virtue of the one waste law um, removing the reasons why you would be uh, you know potentially removing the reasons why you would be uh, hunting a coyote in, in certain times of the year thank you very much <coughs> thank you thank you very mike would yep. you like to make a comment sure what <coughs> Thank you. For the record, Mike Covey, Vermont Traditions Coalition. Um, my only concern with striking that language out of the letter itself is that essentially, um, and I spoke with Mike about this yesterday, the letter that he drafted shows kind of the point that we've come to. And I think there's value in showing all of that point, whether or not it's, it's where we land. Um, I think if we're going to send a letter out at this point, it should have all the various options that have been discussed. Um, I kind of feel like by eliminating options, we're eliminating work that's been done towards consensus. I don't know if that makes any sense. So you're saying send out a letter with both uh, alternatives in it? Yeah, I think Michael's initial letter um, gives anyone who looks at it something to chew over rather than being a solid statement that says, this is the point that we've come to thus far. How do you feel about it? I guess I'm wondering how far we are apart. Like, I, was, I, I think we're into wordsmithing in that, that perhaps we're pretty close. Like, we being kind of you and Barry could 
and the commissioner could get to. I feel like we've come quite a ways. There are still, you know, a few sticking points. Uh, Barry mentioned coyotes and trying to find a mechanism to ensure that there's no de facto season on them, but that it kind of leaves out uh, crows, which, uh, if you recall from my earlier testimony, you know, the, the wanton waste of waterfowl has been brought up a number of times, but in that same suite of federal statutes, there's a provision for crow hunting. So we don't want to create a de facto inability to hunt crows either, and they have a season. So, you know, there's there's nuance, as Carol noted, Representative Odie, my apologies, noted, um, there's nuance to almost every aspect of this. It's it's it was actually more intricate than even I anticipated. <laughs> um, in fairness. Yep. And. I appreciate all the effort you put into it, thank you. Um, and I'm, uh, what about the suggestion of changing the definition of uh, small game, I think it is? Would that, is that germane to this bill? Is that something you can do within this bill? Well, I think if you're going to, oh, well, yeah, for, sure. For purposes of the tip. Yeah, we can, we can right. change definitions. Um, yeah, I think that would have to be a discussion. I would certainly want to hear the commissioners input on that because we'd be more knowledgeable and, and probably we would want to hear from the warden service um, just based on the nuance of enforcement. I'm just wondering if that's the way we could address the issue. And maybe. Representative Dolan. Uh, and there may be alternatives. Other states have a wildlife damage control section in their statutes where they identify situations where you have some wildlife species, such as groundhogs, where, and it kind of addresses that if you have a type of species, such as a groundhog that's causing damage to properties. And that way, you don't, you're not resulting in an unintended consequence of just um, adjusting a small game to, to allow for those takings that, that might result in outcomes you're not seeking. Well, the rest of the bill does that. So I think looking at this with that language in there will be helpful to us in the committee. So let's, I think, um, do that. So M Mike's comments are, are well taken. And that if we, if, if we adopt, if we, if we adopt Barry's strike throughs um, in our letter, it doesn't show um, the 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 full participation and 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 everybody's input. Um, but what so but what I might suggest um, is that that it, that this that as we see it today, uh, draft proposed language for comment on wanton waste and wildlife retrieval and then say red red strike throughs uh very long drive. so they're there yep. they're so they're still on the table uh, and yet um, we're not if you will dishonoring or ignoring um uh, other contributors I would I would go so far as to suggest that Barry's strike throughs are a continuation of the work of the group yeah. so as if they're on there as strike throughs yeah right. I think that's absolutely viable yeah. I agree yeah. Yeah. That's valid. okay any other thoughts yeah. so are we going to make that change under alternative one to spell out small game so we're not including under alternative one, yeah. 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 I don't think we should. I know. Can I just, um, all I can say is I, I don't have the. I, Barry. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I, I leave it to the department to, I mean, and whoever to come up with what they want the definition for small game to be. I don't. It, I just think it may have been drafted in error. I think the definition might have just been drafted wrong to be too broad. So I would defer to the department of what they want to consider small game, but depending upon how they 
what they would want at the small game, then that's going to influence what how we draft the, the bill. So if they take out just wild animals, then fine, it still includes fur bears. But if they want to take out fur bears too, then we would need to draft this bill to say fur bears uh, in addition to small game. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're all acknowledging that other wildlife is an issue during this definition. So why don't we just change game or small game to game quadrupeds, game birds, and fur bears? as a starting point for the next round. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we why, should. Why that yeah, I, I don't think that we should just, because everything has just so many. Speak up. Oh, everything has so many consequences. I can't answer whether that sound, it sounds, well, maybe we can't okay, but I would wait until you, yeah, you've got to hear. Uh, there are so many things to listen to when anything has changed. Okay. Um, That's why I was suggesting an alternative which other states have done, would you specify the carve out for those um, type of species that are caused, that potentially can cause damage to property and therefore you avoid the unintended consequences of other wildlife that might end up being um, collateral damage. But Michael O'Grady, our amendment has that in it. Oh, there he is. Carving out woodchucks. For property protection, it has property protection. Yeah, right. 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 So that is why it kind of addresses representative the colors concern. It's already in there. Representative, you, you know, I think we've done our job by creating the study group, and uh, this is our report more or less on their progress or the status of how far they've come, and I think they have come a ways, uh, 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 far enough anyway to make me think that there is a reconciliation at the end of the end of the road. So I've. I don't wish to have anything changed. Uh, I would like this to be going back and uh, whatever, and then to come back to us with basically what they have decided they can live with and uh, we will either accept it or not. So one more round. Yes. I think so. <coughs> so I would like to, I'm into the honoring business today. I'd like to honor <laughs> the, the statement that, that Carol made. We don't, we shouldn't just this committee this morning shouldn't change, scratch small game and put in quadruped and fur bearers um, for the next iteration. I think that that some we need some method um, because I've, I've ID'd this issue, heads have been nodding, that right from the beginning popping a, your, your grandchild popping a, uh, a chipmunk is, is an issue. Um, it's a issue on the. It's a real issue, and so I think I would like to do what Trevor said, but also do what Carol said. So in the same way, we in the same way this can be done, people. In the same way, we're having a red line strike through from uh, Barry. We could have a green line strike through. Um, credit the committee uh, that suggests um, for the purpose of this bill. So the green line strike through would be um, small game and then um, the new the new definition would be quadrupeds and fur bearers. Is that, did, did I copy that down? There? I'd strike game or small game and put the three items. Okay. Um, so a, a, a green strike through for, for those four words, um, then then underline as is our is our practice quadrupeds and fur bearers and game birds and game birds and and then that be acknowledged to the committee. Um, it keeps it all on the table. It keeps. It, it highlights this as an issue. The commissioner can still weigh in. Everybody can still weigh in. They may. So that's a thought that gets it done. Right? I, I yeah. guess I have to, um, Ultimately, the audience for this letter or this language is essentially the general public. And I don't know that we're going to be helping clarify the issues for people who are going to want to provide us input. So I think just thinking of the what's the purpose of it. Yeah. Um, where we're going with the language. You know, I would push back a little bit that this red line, blue line, green line 
And the comments on the site is incredibly common and uh, in, in, in uh, consensus writing. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, you know, I, I, that's thought. I can leave it the way it is. The, the two main players, or the four main players, are in the room. <laughs> Michael and Barry and, 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 and Michael again and Carol. And so they've all heard this ad nauseum and can deal with it or not. The commissioner's on here. Okay. Um, Brenna, did you want to make a comment? Yeah, um, our members, over 25 members. For the record. Brenna Galdenzi, president and founder of the Decker Wildlife. Um, I just want to share just the only concern that I have is that my group is really looking forward to having wanton waste law applied to fur bears, which would mean animals who are trapped, um, or fur bears that are hunted, bobcats are hunted. Um, and when I spoke with Barry a couple of weeks ago, and he told me that this one waste law is only going to apply to animals with bad limit that essentially um, eliminates otters and beavers and all kinds of animals. So, you know, my group is primarily focused on, on trapping reform. So if um, you know, the fur bear component isn't covered and we're really only offering protections to big game where I really don't think you probably have a lot of wanton waste with moose and bear and, and deer, you're offering this wanton waste protection to the animals who perhaps need it the least, and not offering it to the animals who need it the most. Um, so while I would like to think that we work closer, um, I have to be honest in my concerns about um, if, if the wanton waste isn't applied to fur bears, uh, both the trapping and hunting. Um, OK, thank you for that comment. All right, committee, um, I think we're going to have another round of this. We'll let the folks involved in the working group work with Michael O'Grady on another iteration, and hopefully we'll have time to look at it uh, together again.